Well, good morning. Welcome to another edition of Take 5. We are in Acts chapter 1, verse 12. When they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. Then they returned. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. It's 11. Verse 14, they all joined together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. So this is the core group. All right? In, uh, in any ministry, you've got your leader and his core group, then the fringe group, then the masses. All right? This core group is these disciples and these women. All right? Verse 15, in those days Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120. Okay, this is the fringe group. It's still a very important group. Very devoted, very faithful. They're hanging around. Uh, some of them will come and go into the core group, but you know, they're the fringe group. It's not the masses, though. The masses are the thousands that, that we've seen in Jesus' ministry. So we've got the core group and the fringe group. Verse 16, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who served as guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in this ministry. With the reward he got for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong. His body burst open. And all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field in their language, Akeldama, that is, field of blood. For said Peter is written in the book of Psalms, May his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. Therefore it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So, look, Judas is dead. Judas killed himself. Alright, that's the, the bottom line there. So we got to replace him. That's what Peter said. There's got there's there's a hole in the apostleship. We had twelve. Now there's eleven. We need a twelfth one. But the qualification is it's got to be somebody been with us the whole time. And the whole time starts at John's baptism. And that's why I have been emphasizing this over and over. If you just read the scriptures. There is a super duper strong emphasis on John's baptism, but in our churches there's virtually no emphasis at all on John the Baptist, his ministry, or his baptism. And I don't get it. You know, we just basically don't read the Bible, I guess. But uh, anyway, on this program we read it. And so I would encourage you, if you're not familiar with John's baptism, go to the beginning of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, and just start reading. Okay, you'll get it right there. Verse 23, so they proposed two men, Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Kind of like when you're down to a, a job interview. It's you and one other guy. Who's going to get it? Well, these guys, they say, look, they're even Stephen. We got them, and they're even Stephen. We really can't figure out which one we should go with. So this, And this is what you should do, too. Okay, if you've got a, a decision to make, and two, two people or two things or, or even Stephen... Verse 24, then they prayed. That's what you need to do. You need to pray. Verse 24, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Now that's true about God. It's not true about us. And that's why these guys prayed. And we need to be careful about judging people. God knows the heart. All right? And you might be wondering why somebody's in a certain position or something. Well, God knows what he's doing. First of all, he knows hearts. He knows your heart. He knows their heart. And he knows his purpose. And he knows what he's trying to do. So leave God alone. He's doing a good job, okay? Uh, show us which of these two you have chosen. See there? Not give, not even something like give us wisdom to pick them. Just show us which one you have chosen. To take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and that's one of the ways they did it. And I don't have an issue with that. It would be like throwing dice or flipping a coin. You pray about it and ask God to make it clear, and, and that's I think God can bless that. Uh, verse 26, in the cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias, so he was added to the eleven apostles. I'm going to talk a little bit about Barsabbas, okay? The guy that didn't get picked. Because sometimes you're the person that doesn't get picked. You know what? 
God had a plan for him too. It just wasn't to be an apostle. But he fit certainly into God's plan. And uh, we don't know anything about him. But, you know, if, if you don't get picked for something, just trust God on that. But now, the encouraging thing, though, is it's very possible God's got a destiny for you right around the corner. But he's got to, you got to give God time to work out the details. Don't go try busting in on your destiny too quick. Some of you are single. Your destiny is to get married. But God's got to work some things out. He's got to close some doors. Perhaps the one you're going to marry is with somebody else right now. He's got to close that door for her. He's got to uh, open some other doors in some ways. You know, Matthias was destined to be an apostle. But there were already 12. One of them had to go. Well, God took care of that. Judas took care of that. So that door was open for Matthias. So just give God time. Maybe it's a job situation. Maybe you're unemployed or you're not in the job you, you believe you should have or that God wants you to have. Well, give him time to close some doors. Maybe somebody's got the job you're going to have and they're going to get promoted or demoted or fired or die. And that's going to open up that spot and you're going to be able to get that one. You know, just give God some time. He's working it all out. And you will eventually get to your destiny. But, you know, you just got to trust God on that. Do what these guys did. Uh, you know, they, they had to figure out what to do. They prayed. But somebody may be praying about you to realize that too. All right? The main thing, the main thing, the main thing, the main thing. Trust God and obey Him. Come back next time. We are going to be in the most... Maybe, I, I hate to say, maybe the most important chapter in the Bible. Well, okay. In, most important chapter in the book of Acts. I'll go that far, I think. And perhaps in the New Testament on the next edition of Take 5.